realistic, why, so you ask yourself the question, well, why would an employer want to hire me? And I come back to my earlier answer about what you're good at, what you can bring to them, how they'll benefit. But in the course of my work, again, it's management consultancy, so this may not apply to everyone, I've been able to help people transform themselves from one career path to another by working with them to identify what they've got in their experience that they can inflect, if I can use that word, play up to their advantage. Because no matter what move you're trying to make from your industry to another, from your function to another, there's bound to be some connection. You've got to find that in your background and really play it up. I'm not saying you should lie on your CV, but there's nothing wrong with a little bit of healthy exaggeration <laughs> <laughs> to help you get where you want to go. Now, in the course of my career, I've recruited for a particular firm of management consultants that I'm not allowed to name. I've recruited diplomats, journalists, sorry, a number of diplomats, a journalist, a professional rugby player. He happened to be a Rhodes Scholar, which is why he got the job. But nevertheless, he was a professional rugby player. Secret Service agents. And these people knew nothing about business. They knew nothing that would be, make them an effective management consultant. But what they had was shining and shining intelligence. And they had done exceptionally well in the careers that they had chosen to date. And that, plus the ability to map what they'd done onto what they could be doing in terms of the expertise that they could bring, was what, they, what got them into that particular firm of management consultants. So if you look hard enough in what you've been doing, you can make, I think, any change that you want research scientists to education consultants. All things are possible. Okay. Um, seeing as though I help people start their own businesses, I would say if you're thinking of career change, think of starting your own business. All right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm, kidding. I'm, I'm, I'm going to focus on Question two and three, because I think the principle there is the same. The key, the key factor is differentiation. Um, let's first reflect on, obviously, the current climate. Um, it's very challenging. Don't get me wrong. Um, I agree with Don. Obviously, you know, the job market is very saturated. It's very competitive. So that's why I see your key strategy is obviously differentiating yourself. So obviously, what does it mean to differentiate yourself? When you're looking at, you probably, I'm not sure what the statistics are, but I'm, I'm assuming probably you've got about 50 other people that are applying for the same job. So when it comes to career change, I, I commend those that are thinking of changing their career because it takes a lot of courage. Obviously going into a new path, etc. So obviously you do a lot of discovery into that, that path and make sure that it is the right wall that you're climbing. Um, in terms of differentiating yourself, I'd say there's probably three key areas that I would say focus on. One key area is responsibility. And what I mean by responsibility, in other words, it's, it's up to you. you. You to make it. I mean, just by you being here tonight is you taking responsibility. But, you know, one of the, one of the things that, that I say to a lot of people is life gets in the way. You know, we go home tonight and we forget about everything that we've learned today or we've taken away all the relationships. Act now. Do something about it tonight. You know, there's 40 opportunities here for those that are thinking of career change. You know, people you can talk to, etc., people you can network, see opportunities with. So responsibility is very, very key. The second point about responsibility is invest in yourself. If you want to differentiate yourself, invest in yourself. You are your most prized resource and hopefully a, a company's most prized resource. And what I mean by investing in yourself, obviously JCI, ISAC are great examples. In other words, I think uh, probably Jane will maybe say a lot more about it, but when it comes to talent management, you know, uh, today's organizations aren't so much looking in your technical knowledge. In other words, are you, the, are you a CFA, etc.? Um, what they're looking for is in terms of your leadership qualities. You know, things about your ability to build relationships, your ability to communicate, your resourcefulness, your initiative. 
Um, and also, I'd say your entrepreneurship. There's a very strong um, degree for entrepreneurship in a corporate context. So I don't just think entrepreneurship applies to small business. So that's what I'd say is invest in yourself, uh, you know, in terms of your leadership qualities, because that will really differentiate yourself. You know, with your ability to build relationships, your circle of influence will be large, and you'll have opportunities coming to you. So that's what I talk about um, in terms of uh, responsibility. The next area is relationships, which I've obviously talk talked about, but I've spoken to a lot of um, successful people, a lot of mentors in various different areas, and a lot of them will always talk about your close peer group. And what I mean by that is that often a lot of people have said to me is that the success, your success will be down to the six closest people that you know and spend a lot of time with. And so that's what I'd say. The final area, which I'm a big advocate of, is mentorship. If you really want to differentiate yourself is go and find a mentor, a legitimate mentor. Someone that's been there and done that and got, the tw uh, got 20 t-shirts for it. You know, it's a big, huge catalyst to your career, trust me. And also their relationships. They've got a huge circle of influence. You can tap into it as well as your learning. So for me, that's been one of the biggest catalysts in my, my career and business as well. So it's mentorship. So if you want to differentiate yourself, I'd say focus on those three areas. All right, thank you. Um. The biggest thing I'd probably say when you're looking at, uh, at going into organizations, and like I said, this sounds really basic, and it's kind of what John said as well, is actually figuring out why, why you want to be there. Uh, what is it about you that they would want about you as well? I mean, you'd still not believe the number of people who we have coming for job interviews, who if you say, why do you want to join us, or why would we pick you over someone else, they actually struggle to answer that. You would think it's the most ba basic thing to know, but it is something that if you really believe in it, you're far more likely to succeed and come across as genuine as well. So I'd say in terms of going for a job, it is really, really important to figure out why you, why you want to go for that job. Uh, then in terms of, I guess, what makes you different or if you don't have that work experience, uh, you feel you don't have it. Uh, again, I'm going to be reiterating a few points, but I mean, all of us do have hobbies and having hobbies that help you with your career uh, really helps from several regards. Um, I mean, you can build and gain so many experiences through being involved in things like JCI or some ISEC or similar networks. And organizations do really strongly take that into consideration because it does differentiate you from everyone else. Everyone, most, most people who apply for a job have got a degree of some sort. So seeing that that person has got energy, drive, passion over and above their job and have actually achieved things, they've perhaps spoken at events, organized events, etc. it really adds a lot of value to that individual. Um, so they're far more likely to succeed from that regard. Um, again, just on the differentiating yourself, another big one for us would even be things like how have they been involved in the local community? What projects have they organized off their own back that other people may not have even thought to do? So it's something, again, just something slightly different, but it, it differentiates you from anyone else. Um, and then the last one, again, which everyone's already mentioned, but it's really networking. Networking is key because, I mean, especially in a, in a downturn, we're all still recruiting. I mean, we've had a recruitment freeze on now for the last two years, I think. Maybe it feels like it anyway. Um, but we're still recruiting people. You still need people to fill jobs. And uh, we find those people either through <laughs> recruitment companies who stalk us daily um, <laughs> or, or through networks, that, that, that people who know people. So that is very much the best way to actually get into an organization, making sure um, making sure you are recognized and known and visible uh, within whatever sector it is that you're keen on getting into. So that's definitely uh, one place that I would, would look at. And yeah, yeah, I guess, again, just to reiterate, know why a company should, should really want you over anyone else. So, yeah. We're recruiting at the moment. We are recruiting insolvency lawyers, employment lawyers, litigation <laughs> <laughs> lawyers. <laughs> And we've been through uh, uh, a number of redundancies in, in other sectors. Uh, and, but, but when we are recruiting these people, uh, we, we get uh, quite a lot of CVs. Uh, in fact, more than we thought we would, because we thought, you know, uh, in a climate such as this, perhaps there aren't that many employment lawyers, uh, junior employment lawyers uh, out there. Uh, but in fact, there are. Um, and uh, when it comes to, to selecting, um, Okay, we, we look at, okay, um, technical ability, that's a given. Everyone's got to have that technical ability after three, four years of practice coming out of a good city or West End firm, uh, which is what we'd be looking at. Um, they, they all have that basic skill set. Um, so what, what more do we need? 
you know, to be honest, as lawyers nowadays, we have to be also good salesmen. Uh, we have to be uh, good at a lot of other things. Um, so we look at people who have, for example, language skills. Uh, people who have uh, traveled a lot, people would, uh, with, with other experience, not just legal experience. Um, and we, we then compare and see uh, whether they, they fit us as a firm and whether they fit our general business plan. So, again, in terms of differentiating ourselves, I suppose we're all a little bit, we're all different um, um, in a lot of ways. Uh, it's just a question of trying to turn that difference into an advantage.